From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Uh, this is Lieutenant Shark. Did you leave a message for me to call? Yes, I did, Lieutenant. I want it you... It was all bundled up by the time I got it. Snyder got your name in one hotel, but I never did find out who you are and what you wanted with me. It was about the Alonzo Chapman killing. I'm an insurance investigator. I was sent out here from Hartford, Connecticut, to see what I could learn. Oh, you were? Well, how did you get out here so fast? We got the news at about 8 last night. I was on a plane by midnight and in Los Angeles by noon today. Well, 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 must be tired. I don't have any more than I had last night. I suppose you want to talk to me, though. Yeah, I'd like to. All right. Come on over. But uh, give me an hour so I can get some lunch. <laughs> Edmund O'Brien in a transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Hello. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Tri-State Insurance Group, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Alonzo Chapman matter. Expense account item one, $208.50, airfare and incidentals between Hartford, Connecticut and Los Angeles, California. After a delay of about an hour or so, I was able to make an appointment with Lieutenant Jim Schock, the detective in charge of the case. I met him at about 2.15 and he brought me up to date. Uh, Chapman was registered at the Quincy Hotel. He met this uh, gr- this girl in the hotel bar at about seven last night. They left together about they got it at a quarter of eight. Turned in the alley to get to the parking lot where her car was parked, and that's where he was shot in the alley. Was it robbery? No, uh, he was well healed too, over three hundred dollars. Had in his coat pocket. What about this girl? We didn't hear about her. Well, we did. Norma Sale. Picked up on a shoplifting charge last year. But uh, she got a job and stayed out of trouble since. Pretty little thing. Born in Nebraska. She says she met an actor in a road company back there. He told her he'd uh, introduce her to some important people in Hollywood and maybe she could... Well, you know how it goes. Yeah, but I wonder if Chapman's wife is going to. She's on her way out here. How long has this girl known him? Well, she says she just met him last night. I think that's what she said. He was transferred to county jail this morning at 11.30, a material witness. I suppose you want to talk to her. Yeah, I'd like to. So would I. Might as well go on over. Because it's growing too fast. That's why we got too many people. We got too many... We got uh, too many cars. Too much of everything. But streets. It's a mess. Of course, I don't know anything about Hartford. I've never been there. Well, it's a little slower pace than Los Angeles, but it's got its problems. Yeah, I suppose every place has something. Yes, yes, but... Lieutenant. Oh. We just called Cassidy when he wanted to send it back to his cell. Yeah, all right, I'll do that. Thanks. Oh, come along in, Norma. This man is Mr. Dollar. He's an insurance investigator from back east. How do you do, Miss Sam? Hello. You can just sit down. How are you feeling today? Not very good. I tried to talk to you last night after Mr. Chapman was shot. Do uh, you remember? I sort of half remember. I went to pieces, I guess. Yeah, you did. Couldn't get anything that even sounded like a statement from you. That's why I had you held, so we could talk it over today. Sure. But I don't know anything. He left and then it happened. How long had you known Mr. Chapman? I just met him last night. He made regular visits to Los Angeles. Are you sure you didn't meet him before? Of course I'm sure. Why would I lie about that? We... Struck up a friendship last night. Uh, how, how did that happen? Well, I dropped into the bar at the Quincy for a drink, and he started to talk to me. Uh-huh. What all did he say? It was just one of those things. It happens all the time. I knew it was a pitch, but he seemed like a nice guy. He just didn't want to be alone. He asked me if I knew any good places to eat, and I told him about a place I like out towards Hollywood, so hmm. he asked me if I'd show him. Uh, you ought to be more careful who you get friendly with. Maybe I'd better turn that around and say you ought to be more careful about who knows you're getting friendly with somebody. I guess I don't get you. Well, we're looking for a reason somebody would want to kill Chapman. Maybe a man friend of yours? Well, it couldn't be anything like that. I don't have any steady boyfriends. No, that's not saying there isn't somebody who wants to be one, is it? There isn't anybody, and that's the truth. 
If it had been somebody I knew, I would have recognized him, wouldn't I? And it's possible that you might want to protect him if you did know him. I didn't know him. There isn't anybody who'd do anything like that. No, I, I can't hold with that, Norma. You're young, you're pretty. Why, I should think there'd be a bunch of young bucks after you. Boys from that store where you work, man. I tell you, there isn't. It's the truth. There isn't. If there was, I'd tell you. Well, maybe you would. We've got to find a reason the Chapman was killed. I don't know. It wasn't because he was with me. All right, now, Norma. Don't get all upset again. You've got to remember some other things. I hope you aren't holding anything back, Norma. You know that we can learn the truth from other people. Sure, I do. Ask the girls I work with. Ask Jeannie Stevens. She ought to know she's lived with me for almost a year. All right, Norma. Now, when you and this Chapman decided on a place to go for dinner, you left the hotel. You started for your car in the parking lot. Huh? Yes. You turned into the alley which was a shorter trip than going around the corner, and this this gunman was waiting there. Hmm? It wasn't dark, was it? No, not quite. How far down the alley was this man? Well, it was not very good at measuring, but it must have been about oh, halfway to the parking lot. Uh, there's a big trash box there behind one of the buildings. This man was waiting behind the box, and when you came by, he stepped out, fired three shots, and ran away. And it was light enough so that you could get a good look at him? Yes, it was darker in the alley, but I'd have recognized anybody I knew. Would you remember if you saw him again? I'm not sure. Maybe I would. Now, Norma, it's up to us to figure out how come this killer was waiting there, where he was. It beats me how he knew Chapman was going to pass by that box. I don't know. You can see how odd it looks, Norma. If he didn't know Chapman was coming that way, he must have known that you were. I don't know how it happened. I'm telling the truth. Maybe somebody heard us talking in the bar. Heard enough to know you and Chapman would go through the alley? Maybe somebody could have. I don't remember exactly how it went, but I told him where my car was parked. Yes, I said... I said just down the alley, I remember. And then did you leave? Oh, not right away. We had another drink. Well, that'd take uh, about 10 or 15 minutes, I suppose. Well, how about it, Dollar? I don't think I have anything more. Thanks, Norma. All right. I'll get Cassidy to take you down. I'd like to send you home, Norma. Uh, maybe tomorrow. You know how it goes. To both Lieutenant Shock and me, the jealousy motive was still first choice. As a matter of fact, at that point, it was the only choice. Nothing in Alonzo Chapman's room or among his effects gave a hint of a murder motive. The Cleveland police had been requested to send anything they had on him, and local men were at work checking his Los Angeles business associates and his movements. Chuck left to question Norma Sale's roommate, and I went back to satisfy myself on the beginning of it all. I waited for the evening bartender at the Quincy Hotel. Uh, no, I'm not busy. We won't get crowded for another hour. How about last night? Were you crowded about 7, 7.30? Oh, yeah, yes, well. If you'd ask me about anybody else in the place, I couldn't tell you a thing. But I remember this little blonde dame and this guy Chapman. I'm glad to hear that. Usually doesn't happen this way. Yeah, I suppose not, but I'll tell you how it was. You see, a Chapman had been in a hotel for a few days, you know. Yeah, I got in Friday last week. Well, I'm not sure when I first met him, but he dropped in for an early drink, like, you know, quarter to five, five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talk a little bit, then he'd go up to his room and come back around seven and stay for another hour or so. I, I tell you, it was fun to have him. What do you mean? Oh, not as getting killed, not that far, but I mean a little blonde. I didn't just know what he was saying to her or anything, but... That when she came in, the bar stools were all taken. Chapman spots her and gives her his place. How long had he been there? Just a couple of minutes. I hadn't gotten around to taking his order yet, but when I did, he ordered for the both of them. Then after that round, they moved to one of the booths. Did you happen to notice another man who could have been interested in them and could have been close enough to overhear them? Oh, no, no, gee, the, the place was full. I didn't notice. Or, or maybe the bar girl did. The Grace Curcio. She'll be in at 5.30 if you want to talk to her. I'll have to come back later. Chapman's widow is due to arrive in about 20 minutes. That masher had a wife? Yeah, how about that? Oh, I'm no stuffed shirt, but if that guy acted this way in all the towns he hit, she's better off without him. Now, I'll ask Grace if you want. Uh, what, what's your hotel? The Larkin. If she does remember something about it, I'd appreciate a call. Huh? Sure, sure. Yeah, my name is Howard. Thanks a lot, Howard. See you later. Lieutenant, this is Dollar. Uh, oh. Oh, you got anything to report, Dollar? Nothing that does us any good. Mrs. Chapman just checked into the hotel. I'm in the lobby there now. How did you make out with Norma's roommate? Oh, just fine. She seems like a level-headed sort of girl. She says uh, Norma hasn't gone with any one particular man for a year. That was the 
name was Clyde Mills. Served a uh, uh, six-month sentence on some charge or other, not important what, but they're all washed up. She says he's not even in town, but we'll look for him anyway. Yeah, I'm going up to talk to the widow, if it's all right with you. Sure, go right ahead. Make a suspect out of her if you can. We need some. Could be. From what I hear, she had a motive, not counting the insurance money. But I don't know whether she knew it or not. I'll check with you later. Meeting Mrs. Chapman was quite a surprise to me. I naturally expected to find a widow approximately the same age as the dead man, something near 50. But she wasn't. She looked to be only a few years over 30, if that. Don't feel like you have to try and make things easy for me, Mr. Dollar. You don't. All right, Mrs. Chapman. Did he suffer much? No, he died almost instantly. If it had to happen, I'm glad it went that way, then. I hope you understand. I'm trying to. I take it you weren't too fond of your husband. I wasn't. And it would be stupid for me to tell you anything else or to act any other way than I am acting. We're still looking for the reason your husband was killed. You said he was taking this girl someplace. He was, but we haven't been able to make anything out of that yet. She says there's nobody who would kill out of jealousy. I saw her picture in the paper. We doubted her, too. But our closest friend wouldn't have any reason to protect someone who had tried to kill Miss Sale. She said there was nobody. Well, there are other men who'd have good reason to kill him. You didn't know him, did you? No, i never seen him. He was good-looking. Not tall, but he sort of looked it. He took care of himself. The iron gray hair. He was better looking when he passed 45 than he ever was when he was young. I was surprised that you were so young, Mrs. Chapman. That's why. He was attractive to women. My bad luck was leaving Cleveland and letting myself get roped into a marriage. I found out about one of these girls. And then he started bragging about all the others. You mean it's possible that a man followed him to Los Angeles from someplace else and killed him? I don't know, but I do know that he must have hurt a lot of people. Well, he, he's through hurting me. I've stuck it out because I knew this was going to happen someday. Every time I've read about a murder like this, I knew it would happen to him. Now it has. Now I own a house. I have a bank account. Insurance money. I'm finally getting something from my marriage. <laughs> I tried to phone Lieutenant Shock a report on my meeting with the overly honest Mrs. Chapman, but he was out of his office getting the teletyped answer to the request he'd made for information from the Cleveland police. So I cabbed over to see him. Now, I'm not saying that what Mrs. Chapman says isn't possible, but I don't want to go off half-cocked on a wild goose chase. I didn't think you'd like it. I don't either. Chapman came here from Fresno by train, so say it would have to be some guy from there. We'll see why he didn't... Well, say he didn't kill him in Fresno because he thought he wouldn't draw suspicion down here. How did this guy locate him? Chapman didn't reserve a room at the Quincy. He usually stayed someplace else, so he'd have to be followed. Ah, that's no good, Dollar. Why, you couldn't expect an inexperienced man from Fresno to do a job of tailing like that through Union Station from there to the Quincy and all this, uh, this traffic? Well, uh, uh, it's possible, I suppose. You going to check it, then? I guess so. Probably wouldn't be too hard to get a list of the people who got on that train at Fresno. Yeah. list is hard up for motives. Now we got them all over the country. He was old enough to know better. Lieutenant. What? Uh, here's a follow-up on the stuff from Cleveland. Oh, thanks. Great. Hmm. Well, this is darn nice of those boys. Hmm. Get something? Hey, Chapman phoned Cleveland that day. He checked in, didn't he? Yeah, it was Friday. Why? Look at this. Seems like his missus was seeing a lot of a man named Nicholson. He's known to have left Cleveland on Friday night, and he hasn't been seen since. Hmm. Like this a whole lot better. Yeah, this could be what we wanted. A man with a motive who knew where Chapman was. You think it's time you met the honest widow? <laughs> you to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Melody knows no boundary, neither does Joy, as Russ Emery and Judy Lynn sing their hearts into yours, and Ray Block's orchestra and chorus offer the music that's great from the 48. 
It's the full hour Ray Block music party every Friday night over most of these same CBS stations. Listen for it this Friday, a whole hour of the songs America loves, the music the nation dances to and lives by on Ray Block's music party. Now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Mrs. Chapman, this is Lieutenant Shark investigating her husband's murder. How do you do? Glad to meet you, Mrs. Chapman. Well, I'm sorry about the circumstances. It's not very pleasant. Mr. Chapman, we never did get around to talking about your friend, Carl Nicholson, <gasps> did we? What do you... What do you mean? Well, you told me about some of the improvements your husband's death was going to bring you, but you didn't mention Carl Nicholson. Please. I know I sounded hard when I talked to you. I shouldn't have said some of the things. I thought you were being honest. I was. Too honest, I'm afraid. I don't think so. Mrs. Chapman, I've been in touch with the police back in your hometown. They found out somehow about this Carl Nicholson. First, they said you'd been seeing quite a lot of him, especially when your husband was out of town. Is that right? Yes, it's true. Mm, uh, what were your feelings toward Nicholson at that time, that is, prior to your husband's death? I'm fond of Carl. I never made any secret of that. He's my age. We have a lot of things in common. You know what he is? Why, in Cleveland. Oh, now that's funny. The police told me he was out of town. I don't know what this means. I don't understand. You didn't know he left town? No, I didn't. Now, if you were fond of each other and you had all these things in common, it seems to me you deserved to be told if you were just going up and leave town. When did you see him last, Mrs. Chapman? It was last week. Friday, by any chance? No. It was before then. It was Wednesday or Thursday. Why are you asking me these things? The police back there went on to tell me that this Nicholson left town on Friday. The Cleveland police? Why should they even care about Carl? Because I told them that on Friday, your husband had telephoned you from the hotel where he was staying here in Los Angeles. Isn't that right? Yes, but I... I don't know what you mean. Didn't you see Nicholson on Friday after you talked to your husband? No. Do you mean that you think... I told him where Al was staying and that he came out here. Now, now, Mrs. Chapman, we didn't say we thought anything, but it's our job to solve this murder. We aren't saying we think you and him planned the whole thing and that he hopped out of here the first thing after he learned where your husband was staying. But there are a lot of things that aren't clear in our mind. The theory you gave me about all these wrong men around the country didn't hold up too well, Mrs. Chapman. It wasn't a theory. I just told you what I'd been thinking. You said you'd been waiting for it to happen. But the way we see it, the way your husband was killed, where he was killed, makes a jealous out-of-town man seem too far-fetched. Mm, but we're looking into it. Don't you worry about that. Do, do you have a reason to think that Carl has been in Los Angeles? We're covering the possibility that he might have been. Maybe you just mentioned the Quincy Hotel in passing, casually, so you hardly remember. No. I haven't seen Carl or talked to him since before Al called me. I didn't tell him. Why did he happen to leave town on Friday? I told you, I don't know. I didn't know he'd left. Well, with all these things in common, what did you think when the news about your husband reached Cleveland? Didn't you wonder about why you hadn't talked to this Nicholson all those days? Yes, I did wonder. Yeah, now, why didn't you tell us all that without all this back and forth? Because it would have sounded so awful. Do you think you improved things by holding back? I don't know. Maybe I didn't. The last time I saw Carl was on Wednesday. We had a fight and he walked out. You can prove that's the last time you saw him? Prove? I haven't been thinking about anything like that. We fought over the same thing for almost a year. Carl wanted me to get divorced. And I wouldn't. Because you were waiting for your husband to get killed. Did you ever tell Carl that? Yes. Did you tell him uh, that during his, this uh, fight on Wednesday? I think so. But you didn't talk to him after that? No. Could you have learned someplace else where your husband was staying? I don't know. I, I don't know who else Al called. Carl wouldn't kill him. I'm positive of that. Would you happen to have a photograph of Nicholson? Why? Some are on their way by radio photo and some others by airmail. But we might be able to save time if you have some. I have one. 
I want to erase something off the back. Now, don't you fret, Mrs. Chapman. We'll show it to a couple of people. If Carl is innocent like you think he is, well, this is the quickest way to prove that, too. <laughs> I, I'd sure like to help you. You know, if I'd seen a snap of Sure, don't say anything you're unsure. Uh, what did the bar girl say? Almost the same thing you did. It was crowded and she wasn't sure. Oh, I'm awful sorry. Ah, that's all right. I'd rather have a careful witness like you than one that thinks he has to say something to live up to the title. Well, well I, yeah, this guy could have been here and he couldn't have been. I, that's the best I can go. I'm sorry. Thanks, Howard. It's okay. I'll do better next time. I'm going to keep my eyes open from now on. Uh, maybe I'll get on a force someday, huh, Lieutenant? Ah, you know how it goes. They say a boat is so expensive to keep up that before long you don't own it. It owns you. So we sold it, and there went my fishing trip. <laughs> you get much back there? Yeah, but I haven't gotten back into it since before the war. Yeah, you are there. Everybody are there. It's the best Here's nerve the tonic. Lieutenant. Well, oh, thanks. We won't be long. I'll take her down when you're through. Hello, Norma. Oh. We've got a picture of a man we want you to look at, Norma. Why? Well, you look at it. Come on, get a good, bright light on it here. Who is he? You ever seen this man? I couldn't swear, but I think he could be the one that shot Mr. Girk. I hate to say for sure because Mr. Chapman was on that side. Look at it again, Norma. What is there that you think you recognize? Maybe I'm wrong, but the way he's here, right here, the way some of it hangs down across his forehead. This man's about dollar's height. Well, I'm not sure of that. He's kind of crouched. But you think you saw the hair? I don't even know why I think that, but when I close my eyes, it seems like I can see his face. Yeah, well, now you take a long look at it. Study it. We'll have some more pictures of this man tomorrow. And if you can be sure, why, then maybe we can let you look at him flesh and blood. What happened so fast? Just take your time and forget the lieutenant and me. If I could, I'd leave it so you could study it all night. But it's a piece of evidence, and therefore it belongs to the state, so I can't leave it. As it turned out, we didn't have to take that photograph or any other picture back to Norma Sales for identification. The first reason turned up that night. There was another message from the Cleveland police. The body of our chief suspect, Carl Nicholson, had been removed from the remains of his car. The crash had occurred within 200 miles of his home. Witnesses said that he had been returning from a friend's country place, and the alcoholic content of his blood gave credence to Mrs. Chapman's story that they had quarreled. It became obvious later that he had been on a week's drunk. In addition to killing him, it had removed him in other respects as a suspect. The other thing that changed the direction of the matter was not as closely connected to any of the principals. As a matter of fact, hardly connected at all. It was a story on the front page of the next morning's paper. A man named Max Gerber with a criminal background had been found shot to death. Along with a year-old picture of him was printed the fact that he had been staying at the Quincy Hotel. With Lieutenant Shock. I went to view Max Gerber's remains and his effects. And at 10 that morning, Norma Sale was once more ushered into us. Well, Norma, we seem to keep you busy, don't we? Sit down, Norma. Did you bring some more pictures? Not the same as we brought last night. That wasn't the man you saw in the alley. I wasn't sure. The bartender at the Quincy says he'd never seen you in there before the other night. Why'd you happen to go there? I don't know. Guess it seemed like a good idea because I hadn't been there. Was there something special that took you there, Norma? There must be quite a few sort of bars where you haven't been. It wasn't anything special. Well, I think it's fair to tell you that uh, we checked the store where you worked and found out that you left there at 3.30 that day. I didn't feel very good. You felt good enough to go to the Quincy. You felt good enough to let yourself get picked up by this man. What? Well, I... I guess that's my business, isn't it? What I want to do and who I want to be with? Why, sure it is, Norm. Who did you want to be with? What do you mean? A man named Alonzo Chapman or a man named Max Gerber. I just went in, that's all, and I met this guy. You uh, didn't go into that bar expecting to meet some special man, did you? No. Not even if you were paid to meet him? No, I don't know what you're talking about. 
That man that was killed. I mean, the one you were with. Did you know what he did for a living? Said he was a salesman. Well, that's what we're getting at. He was a salesman. We cut two pictures out of the paper, Norman. Here's one. This the man you met at the Quincy? Yes. You sure, Norma? Yes, I am. This man wasn't killed in the alley the other night. He's the man I was with. No, he isn't. This man was killed last night, Norma, right outside the Quincy Hotel. Here's the picture of the other man. They look alike, don't they? They're the same. I saw the suit Max Gerber was wearing. Even it was sort of the same as Chapman's. It was brown. But they're the same. I mean, it was Gerber. It was Gerber you were supposed to meet. It was Gerber. No, it wasn't, Norma. Yes, it was. All right. You were supposed to pick up Gerber in that bar, weren't you? I didn't know what they were going to do. But you did pick this man up and take him down that alley. They said he owed them some money, and that's all they wanted. Tell us how you found this man in the bar, Norma. They planned him out in the lobby. He made a phone call, and then he went into the bar. I went in after him. Brown suit, gray hair? Yes. It was Alonzo Chapman you took out to get killed. No, it wasn't. Why should we tell you it was if it wasn't? You're lying to me. You're trying to trick me. No. They just made a mistake. They pointed him out. Then you made the mistake. No, I didn't. I didn't. I did what they said. They told me I had to, and I did. They sent me because I was blonde, and it was the right one. They didn't say they were going to kill him. He just owed them some money. That's all they wanted. That's all I wanted. I didn't want anybody to get killed. I was blonde and I was young, and that's why they sent me. For money. Expense account item two, miscellaneous, while in Los Angeles, $255.08. Item three, same as item one, transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $672.08. Remarks, the second murder, Max Gerber's, was a gangland rubout, planned with the aid of a young blonde as bait. The first murder was only a mistake. The apparent moral is that companies shouldn't hire salesmen. Women shouldn't marry them. Young blondes should stay away from them, but confidentially, some of my best friends are insurance salesmen. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Edmund O'Brien can soon be seen in the Paramount Pictures production, War Path. Featured in tonight's cast were Hi Everback, John McIntyre, Harry Lang, Jeanette Nolan, and Virginia Gregg. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. Beginning next Wednesday, Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar will be heard one half hour later on most of these same stations. This is Dick Cutting inviting you to join us next week at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Saving Time when Edmund O'Brien returns as yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Every time you buy a United States defense bond, you help in our defense effort and you help build your personal security. Yes, defense bonds are good for you and good for your country. Remember, defense is your job. By United States Defense Bonds. Been to the waxworks lately. Nothing like being taken to the cleaners, though 45 minutes of cleaner fun would be hard to find. You'll enjoy this evening's session of songs and stuff featuring Robert Q. Lewis, his guests, flatters, chatter, and assorted pleasantries. It's the Robert Q. Lewis Waxworks, open for business five evenings a week, Monday through Friday, on most of these same CBS stations. Today, the United States is celebrating the 175th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Stay tuned now for the official U.S. anniversary program with President Harry S. Truman, Secretary of Defense General George C. Marshall, Chief Justice Fred M. Vinson, and others who follow immediately over most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.